Today I'm gonna to look at a gouache brand called Marie's and I got these from Jerry's Artorama. I mentioned these paints when I unboxed some other supplies that I got and the main reason why I got them was because I wanted to find an affordable option for those who wanna try gouache but don't wanna to pay too much money. So let's take a look at these. Hi there, my name is Audrey, your watercolor bestie and welcome to my studio. All right, well, let's take a look at these gouache paints. So again, this brand is called Marie's. They're a Chinese brand. I do like how there's that little notch on the side so the box is easy to open. Getting rid of the plastic film here. I do like how the tube size is pretty substantial. These are 12 milliliter tubes, and so they're a little bit smaller than my 15 milliliter tubes of whole buying gouache. And I've noticed that in general with student grade, you tend to use more than you think. So we'll see how it goes. I'm using my watercolor journal to swatch out these gouache. I've got a round six size brush and a plastic palette. Go ahead and pick up the first color. So this one's a black. So one of the first thing I noticed is that there's no pigment name. I'm turning the tube around and I don't see it. So there is a number to identify it obviously, but no name. So I took the cap off and I tried to squeeze it out and then I realized, oh my gosh, there's like an aluminum cap to it. <laughs> so I needed something sharp to poke into it. So I grabbed my knife. As soon as I poked into it, I know it happens off screen, paint just started squeezing out immediately. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think the pressure from inside, you know, just started spilling out and pushing out the paint. So just beware of that as you're working. Try not to poke such a huge hole, but not so tiny that the paint goes everywhere too. So yeah, just, just be careful as you're squeezing them out. <laughs> I went ahead and took out the Prussian blue as well. And so I'm just gonna work from one end of the gouache set to the other. I didn't add much water to this because I wanted to see the consistency of the paint. And yeah, I mean, so far it's very thick, it's very matte, so it's looking good so far. It's also a little streaky because I'm using cold pressed paper, so it has a little bit of texture. So I added just a little bit of water to this swatch and the consistency is really nice. And it's still very opaque. And as I'm washing out the pigment little by little, it's, yeah, just gliding on the paper really smoothly. So, so far I'm really happy with it. Let's go ahead and test out the next color. So that's the Prussian blue. Again, I'm trying it out with not too much water on my brush and just seeing how it goes on the paper. And it's really thick. <laughs> it's very, very thick. So I'm definitely gonna have to add some more water to that. The color is also really dark. So this one was interesting. When I added a little bit of water, it got even more streaky. You know, you can see that the color is not consistent. And even as I go down, yeah, it's just getting harder and harder. So I'm not sure what was happening there. Maybe I need to give it another chance, but so far this color was not my favorite. But let's keep going with the next couple colors. And I'm just gonna keep swatching kind of randomly and just seeing what happens. So this is how I poked the paint tube. I just did a really small poke and then squeezed a little bit out. This one is the cerulean color. I added just a little bit of water to this one. And again, beautiful, opaque color. And even when it's watered down a little bit, it's really bright. So far, I like these colors when they're just slightly watered down, just slightly. After I swatch all of these, later on, the test will be how well they layer. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But for now, let's just keep swatching. This next color is Viridian. And this is a really beautiful, like, emerald, jewel-toned color. 
And even though I added just a little bit of water, there's the, the strokes are just so streaky. So I'm not sure why that happens, but just making some observations. <laughs> this next color is green pale. And here's just a close up of how the consistency looks with just a little bit of water. And it's laying on really thick, which, you know, is pretty normal for gouache. But again, it's just very streaky. And as I add just a little bit of water, again, yeah, all those streaks. So those are definitely not my favorite. Like I wanted to be able to achieve a matte look. And it is matte, as in it's not shiny, but it's not a smooth matte finish. And since I squeezed out a little bit too much of this paint, <laughs> um, I'm just gonna do a bunch of mark making. So I'm just taking my brush and just testing out different consistencies and just seeing how the paint lands on the paper. And as you can see, I'm kind of having to use at least two or three strokes to make it opaque. But then when I go over it again, it makes that streaky texture. So it's, I don't know, I feel like I have to play around with this brand a little bit more. And then I just wanted to see how it behaves when I paint leaves. Because I already added some water, the consistency is really smooth. And so it's, you know, gliding off of my brush onto the paper like really nicely. I'm not seeing as much of the streaks, but the color is definitely inconsistent. Like it's almost behaving like watercolor where it deposits some pigment into some areas and some other areas it doesn't. It's just different. <laughs> and so now I'm doing the same thing with the Prussian blue because I squeezed out a lot of that. So doing some mark making here as well. And again, you can see that when I do just one stroke, I do see a little bit of streaking. And then if I were to go over it again, then you see even more streaks. And it's not necessarily helping the opacity either. So I'm a little bit concerned as to whether the light colors are also going to behave the same way. So I feel like even though the paint consistency is pretty thick, it's not as opaque as I would like it to be. It's very sheer, as you can see. And here is just a closer look at the mark making. So yeah, lots and lots of streaks. All right, let's keep going with the Brilliant Purple. And to help with the consistency, I did add just a little bit of water. But yeah, again, I'm seeing some dark areas and lighter areas. And I'm gonna do just a little bit more mark making with these, with the remainder paint I have. For the remainder of this page, I'm just going to use up the rest of the cerulean and the Prussian blue that I have, maybe add a little bit of that purple and just fill the rest of this page. And again, just try to get at that opacity and eliminate the streakiness as much as I can. So I'm just getting to know the paints a little bit more as I'm using up these remainder paints. And so here's a closer look at the first six colors. Again, I'm seeing a lot of streakiness. I seem to be having trouble getting like a smooth matte finish. And let's just see how we do in the second half of these colors. All right, up next we have Burnt Sienna. And this one is definitely feeling more like the black. 
where the consistency is really nice, the streakiness isn't really there. And so I wonder if it's just the makeup of the paint itself, the formula of the paint. Maybe depending on which pigment is in there, it kind of, you know, changes the characteristic of the paint. Next is crimson. Really nice deep color. It's really pretty. And even watered down slightly, it's really smooth. Pretty opaque and a good matte finish. This one, I'm not getting the same issue as I did with the other colors. I'm able to get like a smooth matte opaque finish pretty easily. I'm just doing some more mark making with the burnt sienna. Yeah, again, just, yeah, it's very smooth. Obviously there is a little bit of, of the white paper showing just cause the paint is so thick <laughs> in consistency, but so far I like it. All right, up next we have vermilion. This is gonna be a beautiful orange color, I can just tell. Yep, very nice. Next we have the yellow ochre. I'm gonna poke it. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, the paint just um, exploded. <laughs> the paint just exploded out of the tube. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, it's like all over my notebook. It's all over the palette. Um, it's all over my desk and my hands. So yeah, just give me a second as I, you know, squeeze a little bit out and then try to wipe it off. So as I'm squeezing, I notice that there's some kind of like weird clear liquid it's not quite oily but it's not quite white either oh it also got on my keyboard rust <laughs> all right so yeah let me just kind of clean this up a little bit so again just warning to opening these gouache just be very careful they seem to be pressurized yeah open with caution definitely okay <laughs> all right well now that that's over let's see what they look like <laughs> All right, so I don't know if it's because of that liquidy thing that we saw earlier, but yeah, this one is probably the worst color so far in terms of the consistency and the streakiness. I mean, just look at that. Maybe I should have mixed a little bit more. I'm not sure. But the color itself is very grainy. Like, it reminds me of granulating watercolors. So I'm a little bit confused as to why this is like that. So I'm a little bit annoyed with this color. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> This one is a lemon yellow. I personally love using lemon yellow. It's a great color to mix with. I'm hoping this color will redeem the yellow ochre. Let's see. <laughs> okay, well the consistency is pretty good. The streakiness is not as bad. It's just confusing to me like when the paint kind of pools up in certain areas. Again, I see that when I use watercolors or obviously when you use acrylics too, you know, they do tend to bunch up in one area, but I've never really had that issue with gouache. So maybe I need to make it more of a smooth consistency. I'm not sure. I'm gonna do some mark making with the yellow ochre since I have so much of it. Next, I wanted to see how well these colors layer. And maybe I should try these on a different color, but they don't seem to be as opaque as I had hoped. Because the colors are still a little bit transparent, they glide on kind of sheer. 
So yeah, I know it's kind of hard to see, but the, but the second layer is definitely sheer. All right, last but not least, we have the white. So I'm gonna use the white to also layer. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm trying it on top of this burnt sienna one and over these crimson ones. And so far, I'm not impressed. Again, the white is kind of sheer. And even though I'm globbing it on, I still see a sheer brush stroke. It's like there's a ghost of the color that's underneath it instead of it being a true opaque white and not being able to see the color underneath it. So yeah, I'm not impressed. I'm actually getting a little bit frustrated, but I feel like I just need to keep testing it just for testing sake. <laughs> yeah, so when you do glob it on, it does work, but it's not as how it actually should be. I don't know if the white will be better if I mix it with another color. So let's try that. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the Viridian Hue and Green Pale into the white. And it's created this beautiful mint color, one of my favorite colors. So let's just see how that swatches. Okay, the consistency was kind of thick, so it's a little bit hard to work with and that's normal. But yeah, again, just very streaky, very grainy. I don't know, I'm not a true expert with gouache, but I know enough to know that it shouldn't really feel like this. Let's try mixing another color. I'm gonna use some of that Prussian blue and mix it with this white over here. So I did add a little bit of water to help with the consistency so it's not too thick and dry. So you can see that it's a good medium consistency. But then as I paint with it, again, it feels like there's sand in the paint or something. It's just so granulating. And even when I water it down, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's very, very difficult to work with. I mean, I love this pastel color, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's really pretty. But yeah, it's a little frustrating when the paint seems to have a texture in and of itself, when it should be zero texture and be very matte. I will say though, this is still better than other cheaper brands that I've tried. So it's not like this is a complete goner. It's I think for the price, you get what you get, but don't look to necessarily layer with these. I feel like you will be disappointed. All right, so I decided to come back to the first page and do some more layering with the white. Cause again, I really need the white to be opaque. Yeah, you can just see, maybe I watered it down too much. Maybe that's on me. It's so sheer and transparent. All right, so maybe I did add a little bit too much water. So I'm gonna blot my brush and take it directly from the tube. So you can see that I'm not watering it down at all. And now let's see. No, see, it's like, it's like there's some weird sheerness. Like when I spread it, it's spreading out the paint so thinly and then it's sheer. Like, look at that. So I also noticed that as I'm painting with this, even though this layer of black and blue are all dried, like 100%, you can actually see that with my brush, I'm actually picking up that blue color. Like that's just crazy to me. So I'm globbing on the paint, like seriously, look at that. But I'm picking up the paint underneath. So what that says to me is that this paint is too easily reactivated. I only did like two or three strokes and it basically picked up 
that that first layer. So instead of that white being white, it's now a light blue. So it's basically mixing on paper. So again, if you want to use this gouache, I think it's great for, you know, just painting straight on. Or if you are going to layer, then perhaps layer darker colors on top instead of lighter colors on top because you can't do that with watercolors, right? But I think just because of the way that it's layering and the fact that the lighter colors are not as opaque as you would like it to be, I think it's better to use them almost like watercolors where you have to add darker colors on top. So if I were to give this like a grade, <laughs> I would give it like a C. In terms of affordability, that's great. And in terms of quality, it's definitely in the student grade category. And unfortunately, because they're a little bit difficult to use and because you can't really use this to the full potential of gouache, I think it's going to get frustrating after a little while. So I think it's good for a starter set, but if you end up really liking gouache, then I think you should invest in better quality paints. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something new about gouache and maybe you'll give this set a try if you're looking for a more affordable option. I don't always believe that paying more means that there are better supplies. While I do feel like this brand leaves something to be desired, I think it's still a good option for those that want to save some money but still have a good experience with gouache. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and let me know in the comments what you think about this brand and if you've used it before or what your favorite brand of gouache is. I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you next time.